Thomas Isaac Rahan, pastor of the Interfaith Church, for you, to thank all of you for putting us on your screens, in your hearts, and in God's care. Now, it's a very hot day in St. Louis, but in here, we're not just air conditioned, but prayer conditioned. We may not be an ice cream parlor, but we always have great Sundays. <laughs> now, folks, Walmart can save you money. But here is where you get saved. If you really want home improvement, bring your family here. Children brought up in church don't get brought up in court. <laughs> now, although I'm so glad to see all you smart and lovely people did not wait for a hearse to bring you to church, <laughs> remember that God wants full custody, not just weekend visits. Our pictures are all up on God's refrigerator. Don't make him take yours down. Because life without God is like an unsharpened pencil. There's no point. <laughs> so put your trust in Him and remember that forbidden fruits can get you into jams. And that cars aren't the only things we call by the maker. Now sure, friends, there will be times when you'll find it hard to have faith. But when life gives you more than you can stand, that's the time you need the best way to the top is on your knees. And the best vitamin for a Christian is B1. Yes, B1. <laughs> now, my wife, Velma, and I are so grateful to you millions of devout people out there in this big, wide, wonderful world that our Creator so generously gave us. And now, it's our turn to repay Him. For if you're good to God, He'll be good to you. As James 4, 2 reminds us, we have not because we ask not. So I ask you to honor God. And when you do, he'll give back tenfold to you. As we know, faith can move mountains. Now, as for you other millions of viewers out there who tuned in for our extra special event but are not yet part of our ever-increasing flock, Velma and I hope you'll join our loving international family. Now, you don't have to be Jewish or, or Christian or Muslim. You can belong to any faith of the world's 4,197 religions. Yep, I Google. <laughs> Worship anyone from Allah to Zoroaster, and you'll still be cherished and welcomed here with open arms. And with that tax-deductible donation you sent us, Bella, myself, and our many, many volunteers can continue to do God's work to feed the hungry, to clothe and shelter the homeless, and to visit the sick, which we do 365 days a year. Though I'll admit it, folks, every four years we take leap year day off. <laughs> and what we find in hospitals and hospices, from sick wards to private suites, is that, well, doctors and surgeons they simply can't heal as much or as fast as the good Lord can. So pray and pay <coughs> attention to him morning, noon, and night. Well, five times a day as our Muslim friends do. Remember, folks, your prescription is a fraud. Take a subscription to God. A medicine's dose to keep your morose, a dose of the Lord, is its own reward. Now, for those of you out there who've already contributed mildly to God and have become a person of means, we're not surprised. Being wealthy is simply a sign of God's blessing. But if you're not yet financially blessed, it's not too late. Give to God so that he knows you deserve to get more back. Now, just as God never gives us more than we can handle, we don't ask you to give any more than you can handle. I'm not like those other preachers out there who say, if you don't tithe, you're stealing from God, or, or giving is a part of your worship. Though I do think that tithing shouldn't end when you retire. Invest your pensions and social security with the good Lord and watch 
those returns roll in. I guess what I'm saying, folks, is, well, just do the best you can. And God, Velma, and myself, we won't forget it. Call 877-D-E-V-O-T-E-D. -E -E That's 877-338-6833. And here's a handy way to remember that number. For 338, let's go ahead and think of chapter 3, verse 38 of the Quran. Be honorable and abstain from women. Now that's real good advice for all you married men out there. <laughs> as well as you confuse ladies who think you like other ladies. With God's good grace and our restorative sleep away retreats, which are really more like a vacation, all you confused gals can, well, get on a divine and proper path towards a loving marriage and beautiful children. For 6833, let's go ahead and think of Psalms. 6833. He doth send out his voice, and that a mighty voice. And as we all know, we're actually about to hear that mighty voice. Yes, that mighty voice. All you ladies out there looking for Mr. Right, well, he's going to be right here. Now, that's why you've all tuned in today, isn't it? Well, today and together, we're going to make the ratings for all 53 Super Bowls combined look like the ratings for a baseball game. <laughs> to say we have a very special guest, I mean, that's just the, the understatement of all time. And I've got to tell you something, folks. When I received his letter, I was stunned. Uh, Consuela, could you bring that letter up, please? Ladies and gentlemen, Consuela Desiderio. story about Consuela here. Um, one year ago, this poor little lamb was diagnosed with chronic myelogenous leukemia. She didn't have it a couple of months to live, but she's here today because, well, because why, Consuela? I gave my money to God. <laughs> gave her money to God. Thank you, Consuela. Thank you so much. Consuela Desiderio, folks. God is good. <clears throat> Dear Dr. Thomas Isaac Rahan, God here, may I be on your show. I'd like to come to your office in time for tomorrow's broadcast. Well, friends, you don't get a letter like that every day. Uh, of course, I did think it was a hoax. Oh, yes, folks, I admit it. I, too, was a doubting Thomas. But this isn't like any paper that I had ever seen. So I called up my good friend, Dr. Pembroke Kenworth. Now, he is a Rice University professor and a Nobel Peace Prize finalist in interplanetary analysis. Well, he took one look at it and he said, yep, there's no paper like this on Earth. In other words, it was from heaven. Now, God went on to say that he did not want to meet in the epicenter of our beautiful mega church, which many of you knew as the Edward Jones Dome, back when those St. Louis Rams played here. And no offense to the Rams, but thank God they left, because we needed a place to accommodate the 66,962 believers who attend our every service, and that doesn't include those in standing room. But if God wants to meet in my office, well, then my office it shall be. I'm just so humbled that God has chosen my show out of the many, many others that promote goodness and godliness and prosperity. So, let's have us some heaven on earth. Let's have us some church. Right after these messages, we'll be returned with the greatest event in the history of television and earth. And we're out. Woo! Boy, howdy. How are we all feeling today? Good? Well, we're pleased as much to have you. And listen, i got to tell you. I didn't want to say this on the air and offend any of our wonderful viewers, but I set up these very special seats right here in my office. Four, three, two. Folks, we are back, and without any further ado, may I introduce to you the incomparable, the infinite, the eternal, the omniscient, the omnipotent, never mind the Pope, here's the real His Holiness, He sees all, He knows all, He left. He, left. he uh, uh, we'll be right back.
bad folks after these messages. I'm sorry, everybody. He left? What do you mean he left? Well, he, he was here, but he just went out. And you, you didn't try and stop him? What was I supposed to say? No, God, I forbid you to go out. <laughs> uh, why, why would he go outside? Uh, 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 well, let's see. He said he saw no end in sight of you talk, talk, talking. <laughs> That's exactly what he said, but he also said he'd be right back. Oh. They security let him in. This, uh, met him earlier. They'll let him in. Don't worry. Oh, praise be. Thank you, because oh, folks will be right when you're real sick of getting back in. Uh, excuse me, sir. I'm so sorry. Uh, this is a private event. Sorry, sorry, sorry. God! Sorry. Oh, oh, take your own umbrella. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, please, take this Thank you. Hand you, Jack. Thank you so, so much. Oh, what? Much <laughs> like, whoa, whoa. Are you okay? She's getting better all the time. I'm getting better all the time. <laughs> Good. Oh, yeah. so, Thomas, oh, I'm so sorry for huh? holding you up there. I hope I didn't waste any of your time. I wanted to get back then. <sighs> so, um, <clears throat> I have a feeling you expected to see me in a long white robe. <laughs> yeah. Well, well that's, that's how I went out a long, long time ago. Oh. You sold tickets. Oh, in five. Oh, four. Three. <laughs> two. Folks, we are back, so sorry about those technical difficulties, but here he is, Your Majesty. <laughs> <laughs> your Majesty. Oh, I'm sorry, what do you demand I call you? Uh, uh, your Highness, an uh, old learned one. God, simply. God, that's my name. Right. Come on, get up, get up. No. No. Well, I didn't mean no like no, I won't obey you. I mean no, down here is where this good God-fearing man belongs. Right, 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 come on, come on. Up, up, up. Yep. Yep. Well, you heard him, folks. What a God! Oh, <laughs> oh, boy, it is really getting rough out there. Well, tell the good folks, why did he go outside? I wanted to go see that arch that you people put up down by the oh. Mississippi. Ooh, that is something. Oh, yeah. oh, what I didn't plan on, though, was that the rain and the wind would be as terrible as it is. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. The, uh, <clears throat> the sky is this grizzly shade of green. <laughs> is it? Yeah, I think, you know, I think another big storm is brewing. <laughs> but like you, all I can do is talk about the weather. <laughs> Can't do anything about it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Now, before we begin, oh. my wife, Thelma, she asked me to apologize for not being here today. Mm. She and the children are off ministering to the needy. In Paris? Yes. <laughs> the poor people of Paris. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I, I want to thank you for making an exception and letting me in here without a wristband. Well, you know, we hand them out because they help so much with crowd control. Uh, because I didn't bring any of my cash or credit cards with me. So I wouldn't have been able to buy your book, which gets you the wristband, right. which gets you in here. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, anyway, so I hope my coming here today makes up for the fact that I did not show up at 6 p.m. on May 21st, 2011, when that Harold Camping said I would bring the rapture. <laughs> well, Harold meant well. I hope you forgave him. Oh, nothing to forgive. We all make mistakes. Well, not you. Just everybody else. <laughs> so, Thomas, what mistakes have you made? <laughs> uh, well, you know, I mistakenly thought that I'd never actually be in front of God. Not even after you died? Well, no, of course, when I die, I'll be before you. And when I am, I hope you'll be merciful with this miserable sinner. Just how miserable a sinner are you? <laughs> <laughs> so you're really here. Yep. God. Or should I ask for some form of ID? <laughs> what? Oh, I think I left my wallet in my other pants. <laughs> so, but, but I can't prove it to you. Um, okay. for, for those of you who only speak one language, uh, be it English, uh, Dutch, Mauritian Creole, or Esperanto, that's for you. <laughs> Notice how you are understanding Thomas and me in your own language. Now, I hate to brag, I really do. But I do have the ability to make everyone understand Thomas and me in each of the world's 6,911 languages. And I can promise you folks, he did not have to Google that. <laughs> oh, it's good to be the God. Uh, so Thomas, you were graduated from Duke University's Christian Divinity School. Yes. And Duke University's Center for Jewish Studies. Ah, oh, those were happy times. And Duke University's Islamic Study Center, yeah. the third jewel of the Triple Crown. <laughs> well, you know, you're going to go ahead, folks, and, and be an interfaith minister. Uh, so should we call you Dr. 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 Rehan? <laughs> you're your own holy trinity. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're talking with God. Yep. And we'll continue right after this message.
Friends, call 877-BEVOTED. Make a $50 donation and receive this American Christian car sign. The next time you ride around in your car, instead of just letting everybody know there's a baby on board, let them know that in your automobile, there's also a Christian on board. Also available in Jewish and Muslim, other religions coming soon. Here's more information. And we're out. Well, here we go, folks. Isn't this exciting? So, God, tell us, where are you staying? Oh, the Holiday Inn. <laughs> <laughs> you are not. You're staying with me at my compound. No, 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 no. Here we have a terrific continental breakfast. God at a Holiday Inn. Yeah, very nice. We just got it over. You're staying with me, mister. That's all there is to it. No, no, no. That's why I have guest houses. Oh, stop. <laughs> oh, I'll tell you what. Obviously, you take the biggest one. Although the smaller one has a better wine cellar, and the middle one, Mama Bear, she's got that elevator. But all three are right next to the pool, and y'all have a great media room. You can rustle up any movie you like. Yes, I noticed. You seem to have every genre of film. Well, I tell you what. I find that as an interfaith minister, folks, I must be well-versed in all forms of culture, so I watch plenty of foreign films. Mm -hmm. Although, I'll tell you something. Not late at night. It's after a long, mm -hmm. hard day at the hospital, helping the sick and whatnot. I'm just too bush to read all those subtitles. Oh, subtitles, who am I hear you? Yeah. Like, uh, uh, she lusted after her lovers, whose genitals were like those of donkeys, and whose emission was like that of horses. <laughs> oh, wait, duh. <laughs> That's the Bible, Ezekiel 23:20. Not a subtitle. <laughs> In five, four, three, Folks, we are back, and John, you being here today certainly proves what I have been saying all along. There is a God, and that's the gospel truth. So, God, have you returned today to strike dead all those atheists and agnostics out there who were too blind to believe? No, not at all. <laughs> well, I thought maybe just... Might want to slap down that theory, for example. Put forth by that genius, Albert Einstein, who actually said that God is a product of human weakness. Albert wasn't criticizing me. Just the people who made up stories about me. But frankly, I thought about not coming here because, well, Afghanistan, Iran, uh, Malaysia, Maldives, Mauritania, ooh, Nigeria, Pakistan, Qatar, Qatar. Uh, Saudi Arabia, Sudan, Somalia, United Arab Emirates, and Yemen are the 13 countries that put people to death for not believing in God. Uh, so I say to you, leaders of those countries, please don't put anyone to death because today I prove, I'm proving that there is a God. Right. And so I, I say to you non-believers, as well as to such atheists as Daniel Radcliffe, Morgan uh -huh. Freeman, uh, Bill Maher, Kieran uh, Knightley, Billy Joel, and Dane, Helen Mirren, uh, you were wrong in thinking that I don't exist. Oh, darn too. Uh, but I can understand how you came to that conclusion. Right, right, all right. But, but God, if you showing up here today certainly disproves the sinfully misguided notion that God is dead. Wow. No hard feelings for anyone who thought I croaked. I mean, think about it, the idea of a God that lives forever is sort of hard to swallow. So you'd all be in your rights to say, well, if this God had been around for so long, how come we haven't heard anything from him in the last couple of millennia? So tell us, so why do you think I, I stopped talking to the people? Oh, you know something? It's what I always tell everybody. After you dictated all those holy books, you had no need to speak with us again because those books gave us everything we ever needed to know. Well, Thomas, uh, you wouldn't use a 1948 manual for your 2019 Honda, would you? Oh, I don't have a Honda. Oh, what do you drive? A good old Mamie USA Chevy. No, that's your daughter's second car. Uh, tell us, what do you drive? <laughs> really, a good old Mamie USA Chevy. Which you bought for her. And you're driving that now because she prefers to drive your the other car, which is a Lexus. Lexus. So, <clears throat> Thomas, would you use a 1948 manual on your 2019 Lexus? Well, you know what? I don't think they started making Lexuses until uh, 1989. <laughs> I can see. I'm sure you know all about Lexuses. Lexa? Oh, so, if you believe the Bible, Every single word. Where it says that I made you in my image. Oh, Genesis 1.27, if I may. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he 
created them. Uh, then it follows that either I'm already dead or I'm going to die like all of you. Oh, Thomas, you were so specific with that Bible quotation. <laughs> Are you able to quote every chapter and verse from the Bible? Well, I have spent a whole lot of time with your good book. Yeah. And the Quran. And the Torah. And the Tripitaka. Oh, now for our non-Buddhist friends out there, the Tripitaka is the Buddhist Bible. But it's nearly 40 volumes, so I'm working on it. I'm working on it. But you are able to quote from all the rest. Well, like you, I don't want to brag. Oh, so what's uh, 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 9, 10? But people who long to be rich soon begin to do all kind of wrong things to get money. Mm -hmm. Psalm 37, 16. Ah, it is better to be godly and have little than to be evil and rich. Mm, amazing. Yo. <laughs> what a compliment coming from you. No. <laughs> but no one here ever thought for a second that God was dead, did we, friends? No. We have faith. Uh, well, well, go ahead and have it if it makes you happy. <laughs> you make us happy, Lord. Oh, uh -huh. So, uh, well, the, the God you met in the Bible, the Quran, the Torah, makes you happy. Oh, yeah. Isaiah 66, 16. Go ahead. Don't be shy. For the Lord will execute judgment by fire and by his sword on all flesh, and those slain by the Lord will be many. Uh, Luke 12, 5. Okay. Fear the one who, after he has killed, has authority to cast into hell. Yes, I tell you, fear him. Oh, let's try the Quran. 6, 7. Those who disbelieve will be forced to drink boiling water and will face a painful doom. Uh, Quran 5.33. Those who make war with Allah and his messenger will be killed or crucified or, or have their hands and feet on alternate sides cut off. That is how they'll be treated in this world. And in the next, they will have an awful doom. Huh. What awful doom can there be beyond being killed, crucified, or having a couple of limbs amputated? Thomas, this is a God that makes you happy? You see, well, that's one reason I'm here. Okay. To clear my name from all the bad press that these writers have given me. And don't worry about me punishing you. I don't get mad. <laughs> and I certainly do not get even. You see, the gods that these authors have created, nothing like me. And some of the things they've claimed I've said, Matthew 19.6. Matthew 19.6. I'm sure you know this one, don't you? Well, of course I do, but uh, you know, considering what we've just been talking about, folks, I, I didn't expect you to bring it up. What God has joined together, let no man put asunder. Well, I joined North America with South America by the Isthmus of Panama, but I never ever joined two people together in marriage. I mean, even the you know, Adam and Eve story doesn't say they got married. Who officiated? <laughs> Not me. <laughs> was there a best man? Were there witnesses? <laughs> what was the dress code? Fig leaf formal? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, God, I can see you like a good joke. <laughs> but still, still in all, you must be furious that in American marriage, folks, it goes asunder every 36 seconds. <laughs> Frankly, if your divorce rate were higher, I think your world would be a happier place. <laughs> no man or woman would ever promise to stay in the same job or the same house their whole lives, would they? <laughs> Nevertheless, so many of you promise to stay with the same person who, over the years, probably changes more than any one job or house. <laughs> On my way here, I had a look into all your homes, and I saw that many, many of you are quite miserable. Oh. <laughs> I like being single. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe you just haven't met the right person. Person? No. Marriage is hard. No wonder so many of you cheat on each other. <laughs> oh, so <clears throat> your, uh, your experts, the statistics your experts give on spouses who cheat, <laughs> woefully inaccurate. Mm -hmm. it, it's not 22% uh, of the husbands, but 48%. And not 14% of the wives, but 52%. <laughs> so what God has joined together, let no man put asunder. So, tell us what happens when Velma returns from Paris and you find out that she's pregnant and carrying conjoined twins. Wouldn't you want them put asunder and split apart? Uh, uh, Velma's not coming back pregnant. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Listen, friends. <laughs> Here's my advice to you. Take it or leave it, which is why I gave you free will. Stay together if it works. Get out if it doesn't. Uh, but what about children? Oh, I love kids. <laughs> but must you have so many. I mean, yeah, at this rate, you'll reach 8 billion people. In the next 10 years, your world just can't take it. 
So why don't I just make another world, you ask? Okay. <laughs> I'm getting on, I just don't have it in me. You're not the only ones who are getting old. <laughs> Hashtag AARP. <laughs> <laughs> so the next time someone asks you, is God dead? Well, you can say, well, not yet, but it's only a matter of time. <laughs> and friends, you feel like you've died and gone to heaven. Oh, Thomas, why do people say, I felt like I died and gone to heaven? Why do you just say, I felt like I went to heaven without the die? Right? Isn't that what you really want? Good question. Uh, but first, if I may, we'd love to show you how, in our small way, we help to further your good work. Oh, go, go ahead. Sorry for interrupting. No, are you kidding me? A lot to say. <laughs> <laughs> Folks, on every bottle of ketchup with Jesus ketchup, <laughs> the label, that label reads, let us praise and relish him, because he loves me from my head to my toes. <laughs> Get it? To my toes. <laughs> You say tomatoes, I say tomatoes. <laughs> oh, we're giving it away with every $75 donation. Here's more information. And we're out. Well, we are cooking with gas now, right, folks? Hey, speaking of food, are you hungry? We set out for anything your heart could possibly desire. Consuela! Oh, there you are. Uh, can you go ahead and bring out that food, Charlie, please? No, 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 Consuela, I'm good, I'm good. Well, if God isn't good, who is? Uh, Consuela, why don't you go like that? Take a rest. Would that be all right, Dr. Rayhan? Uh, sure. Mm. Right after you bring out the food. <laughs> no, this way, though. Go lie down. This is your captain speaking. <laughs> Have Antoine bring out the food, okay? No, no, no. Don't bother. But, but we got such a wonderful spread yes. for you. Oh, are you fasting? Does God fast? <laughs> no. I leave that to the Mormons. <laughs> now I'm the Buddhists. And the Jews. <laughs> and the Muslims. <laughs> I love to eat. <laughs> and I love dessert, especially life by chocolate, which I think you people call death by chocolate. Right. For the life of me, I can't understand why. <laughs> <laughs> but, oh, how about this? Why don't you give that lovely sushi to your chauffeur? Huh? Yeah, I think you'll like that. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah. Oh, and your uh, uh, chicken rosada to your maids. Oh, the uh, pad thai to your weekend maids. The uh, veggie meatballs to your trainers and, and give the steak to your bodyguards. This way, your whole kitchen staff will have their first day off in months. If you've just joined us, we're talking with God. So, Thomas, tell me, why do you think I stopped talking to all the people of your world? Well, you know, actually, I, I didn't want to ask. Oh, ask, ask, ask. Um, that's why I'm here, to <laughs> answer questions and to ask a few of my own. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> So, well... I tell you what, hmm. we mere human beings cannot begin to understand what goes through the mind of God. Oh, right? you people are so much smarter than you give yourselves credit for. No. Well, <laughs> frankly, the reason I've been away these past 4.4 billion years billion. is that billion hmm. is that I've been uh, visiting your sister planet, Serendipity. <laughs> <laughs> Ser serendipity. Uh -huh. Doesn't that Noah story say I like things in pairs? Well, in this case, it's true. I made two identical planets. Uh, you're, you're serious. Mm. We are not alone in the galaxy. Never have been. I make two planets so far apart from each other that the left one never knew what the right one was doing, <laughs> which avoids competition, which is something I do not enjoy. Well, then you better stay away from Missouri and Nebraska football games, right, folks? Uh, tell me something. Do folks on Serendipity wear Jesus loves you flip flops? Flip flops. <laughs> folks. Call 877 -E -E Make a $100 donation and receive Jesus Loves You Flip Flops. Jesus is imprinted under the left flip flop and loves you under the right one. So the next time you're walking along on the beach, you leave a Jesus Loves You footprint right there in the sand. You already have one soul. How's about two more? <laughs> Not available in Jewish or Muslim. And we're out. Consuela, make up, please. I thought you were going to take a nap. Oh, she did. <clears throat> oh, Consuela, you know God always comes first. Oh, no, 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 it's okay. Really? Not even a little, just make up, touch up? Not wearing any. Consuela, you did not offer our Lord and Savior makeup? Oh, no, 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 Thomas, relax. No, Consuela did it. indeed offer me makeup and hair, as you show <laughs> people say. <laughs> but I told her I wanted the people to see me as I am. Well, you do look absolutely terrific. Oh, I'm sure I'm not coming off as well as you. What with that Brunello Cuccinelli suit? I know my designers. <laughs> and five, four, three, two. Okay, we're back. Now, now uh, where were we? Serendipity. 
Oh, well, yeah, you can always count on God to remember exactly right where you were. Uh, so, do folks on Serendipity look like us, or are they monsters? So, Thomas, I made you both in my image. That much of what you read in the scriptures is true. Okay. But the reason I stayed in Serendipity there is for so long, is that the people up there, oh, it's just so nice, time just flew by. Yeah. So, why did I leave you, Wes? Well, people out there who've had more than one child can understand that parent must give each child equal time, not to show favoritism. So I will be here for the next four billion years and change, just to make it up to you. Which will give you ample time to strike the fear of God into those who have ruined this beautiful world you gave us. Ruined? Are you kidding me? You people have done wonders with the place. Mm. The cities you've built, I couldn't even build a village. Well, <laughs> irregardless, we couldn't have done any of it without this wonderful world you gave us to start with. Well, I'll take credit for a few things, from the mountains to the prairies to the ocean. Yeah. Uh, but, but you people kept making so much more of it. <laughs> I could only make caves. You figured out how to make houses and hotels, motels, mansions, compounds, skyscrapers, that arch, and yurts. <laughs> yurts, say it with me. Yurts. I love that word. <laughs> all right, but as far as construction goes, I'm all thumbs. Not at all helpful. <laughs> oh, uh, and your indoor plumbing? Oh, one word. Wow. <laughs> now, and you know how uh, we sometimes people call the wilderness God's country? Yes. Oh. Uh, so, well, God's country is what I gave you because all that's all I could manage to give you. But I think people's country beats God's country any day. <laughs> but still in all, we couldn't have done any of this without you. That's oh, what I'm saying. I got you off to a good start. Yes. And true, making plants and people, animals, insects, and the weather coexist wasn't easy. Right. You know, when I made this little, little change to the giraffe, it somehow affected the kiwi. The fruit, not the animal. I don't know how. <laughs> but you people kept making so much more, inventing so much. Oh, oh, like those little cardboard things you put around coffee cups so you don't burn your hands? I wouldn't have thought of that in a million years. <laughs> but the world could not have started without water, and you certainly gave us plenty of that. Yes, Seven but times. what you made from that water, coffee, kidding. tea, beer, bourbon, ice sculptures, Hawaiian punch, pow, <laughs> Coca-Cola. I bet you know the secret formula. Well, your Superman isn't the only one with X-ray vision. Oh, Calvin's. <laughs> uh, so all of you viewers out there, maybe if we show God how much we really want to get his word out there, he's going to give us that Coca-Cola secret formula. Oh, no. <laughs> okay, well, maybe God won't give us that. But we can still give you, with a $150 donation, David's wooden slingshot. Just like the one David used to bring down that pagan bully Goliath. Give it to your son or nephew, even your daughter or niece, so they can protect themselves from heathens. And after they've straightened out each non-believer, they can go ahead and take a break, relax and reflect by reading the entire story of David and Goliath that's printed and embossed on each and every slingshot. That type is so tiny. Well, kids are young, they got such good vision. Not after they shoot each other's eyes out. <laughs> Call 877-D-E-V-O-T-E-D. -E -E Here is my Oh, vision. music! What music? Oh, the music you humans have created. I can only get birds to warble, but what's that compared to your ode to joy? Yes. Your, your, your 1812 overture, your rhapsody in blue, your magic flute. Your welcome oh, your menu. Welcome. I like big butts, but I cannot lie. <laughs> like a virgin. Oh, oh and I love the Armstrong song, huh? Oh, what a wonderful world. Great song. <laughs> oh, not a great song. But the lyrics do remind us what a wonderful world you people have made this. Yes, you people have made this such a wonderful world. Oh. Oh, I can give you an whole alphabet's list of things that are just oh. amazing that you do. Oh, ah, oh, airplanes! Bubble wrap, <laughs> chess, dishes, fireplaces, escalators. Oh, The Godfather, uh, the book in the movie, not the religious sense. Oh, and not part three, not all, eh? <laughs> oh, 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 hammocks, the internet, oh, joy rides, oh, K1 jelly, <laughs> light bulbs, moo moos, not just moo moos, but all clothes, clothes. Yeah. Never even occurred to me. Huh? Nor did shoes, but your ancient Egyptian op rotten, the one who invented high heels, did no favors to women or drag queens. Oh, cur! 
Oh, yeah, you know, every night when uh, Elma and I are getting ready to cuddle up in bed, I hear her complain about those high heels. Well, and many other women have complained to you about that, too, huh? <laughs> right. Oh, yeah, like at a function or an event or a class reunion or whatnot. I always hear ladies complain about those darn high heels. Mm -hmm. well, even though uh, rotten cause a little pain for the sake of fashion, you people have done quite well. Okay. Aristotle, Galileo, yeah. Adam Curie, Leonardo, Da Vinci, not the turtle. And not DiCaprio, don't get me started. Uh, oh, uh, Oprah, Plato, Cher, woohoo! Oh, Philo T. Farnsworth and Vladimir Zworkin, without whom you wouldn't be on TV. Oh. You see, these people knew how to achieve, as could all of you out there if you just spend less money on worthless causes and less time watching certain TV shows. <laughs> yes, folks, TV can be used for good or evil. Mm -hmm. Oh, we should put on more Shakespeare. Yes, please. Thank you. This oh, was a genius. I've read it all. Amazing. Yeah. Oh, oh, you can't write a thing, can't put two sentences together. Uh -huh. But that one, with a quill pen, no less. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> Messy, but so good. <laughs> oh, that's the the computer. Oh, so, Tom, tell me, yeah. what is your favorite quotation from Shakespeare? Ah, uh, sugar. Uh, oh, there was, you know, so many. Well, any one will do. Uh, <laughs> spot me. <laughs> Uh, oh, to be or not to be? That's the question. Mine is, the devil can cite scripture for his purpose. <laughs> and you know what? Scripture is our biggest bestseller. Well, I don't know how many bestsellers are actually considered good literature. Now, would you listen to that, folks? Teachable moment. God is his own worst critic. But you know what really shocks me is that 51.2% of people living in the southern United States yeah. believe that each and every word of the Bible is the word of God. 51.2%. Every single day we try to get that figure up. Which brings me to Dr. Ruth and her book, The Young People's Guide to Sexual Information. Uh, but first, a word about testaments. The soothing breath mints that come in wrappers <laughs> with quotes from the Holy Scripture written on each and every one. Oh, they're delicious. Soothing testaments. Dr. Ruth. God, this is a family show. Yes, and I want the whole family should hear this. <laughs> Dr. Ruth stated in her book that the safe times for sex are the week before and the week of ovulation. Well, the publishers had to do a major recall. Yeah. Because Dr. Ruth had accidentally omitted two little letters. The U and the N. So it should have read the unsafe times for sex of the week before and the week of ovulation. So that's what happened. <laughs> Always knew Dr. Ruth wasn't all there. So, if a book written in the late 20th century could have a big mistake in it, don't you think that holy books that were written on clay and stone and animal hides could contain a little mistake or two or hundreds? Or even yeah. today, writers keep making mistakes. Yeah. Just check out the corrections page on page two of any newspaper, <laughs> if you can find a newspaper. But you oversaw the writing of those books. So, so why isn't my name on the covers? Um, I'm not looking for the millions of people who have made off of my books. I don't care. I don't need the money. Uh, but if I had gotten paid, I would have given my royalties to people who do. Just as we do here. Well, anyway, if I had been more involved in the writing, I think the book should have at least read by God, as told to Moses, or by God, as told to Muhammad, or any of those other fiction writers. Fiction? <laughs> Moses said that I had created the world in six days? <laughs> I wish. <laughs> people, people, it's a lovely compliment. Thank you. Hashtag grateful. Hashtag blessed. <laughs> but I'm really amazed that so many of you believe that. I mean, friends, friends, how long do you think it took me to make every snowflake look different? Anybody? Guesses? Mm -hmm. 316 weeks. <laughs> so I can't even imagine how long it would take me to create a, a tree of knowledge, the one from which your Adam and Eve allegedly ate. Oh, <laughs> if my children had disobeyed me, would I have been so rough on them for their first ever mistake? Hmm? Parents, when your child disobeyed you for the first time, did you throw them out of the house? No. You told them not to do it again. And when they did do it again, what'd you do? You grounded them. What? But you get them your food, shelter, clothing. So if I had evicted Adam and Eve, I would not have any right to command them or you to keep following my rules. Tree of knowledge, if I had made one, I would have encouraged my kids to eat from the morning, noon, afternoon, and night. Why wouldn't I share that fruit like any good father? I don't want the best for my kids. So I did not evict my children because they had somehow done me wrong. No. They said they grew up. They moved out because they wanted to be on their own. Like any kid does, right? 
to hold them close. Let them go. That's all there is to it. But Adam. No, uh, Herman, actually. Herman? <laughs> Herman. <laughs> you know, I could never perfect Herman, even after working on it for 600 years. So I just decided to appreciate what I had achieved and not agonize over what I hadn't. Okay. As so should all of you people out there. My, my, so many of you are awfully hard on yourselves. Which is why we're here to clear the air. Folks, the Rugged Cross air freshener, with its <laughs> spring breeze scent, it comes in a container bearing Ephesians 2, 8. Grace it is the gift of God, with a strong string already attached so it's ready to hang. It can be yours with just a $200 donation. Now, it'll really spice up your cabin when you come along with us next month on our four-day, three-night retreat to Jerusalem, the ideal city for interfaithers. Now, our ark is filling up fast, but we may still be able to make some room. So why don't you call us at 877-DEVOTED. And we're out. Woo! Well, we're having fun, right, folks? Learning, learning lots of stuff. Thanks, Ms. Whalen. Retreat. <clears throat> hey, you know what? You should come with us. We'd love to have you. Uh, my retreat will be my treat, too. Uh, your dictionary says the meaning of retreat is a time spent away from one's normal life in order to reconnect with God. Yeah, that's why we love having him. But there's another meaning, right? An act of moving back, <laughs> withdrawing, giving up. Uh, well, we'll just have to uh, come up with another word then, I guess. Uh, any suggestions? No. Retreat's the right word. So, after Herman came Eve, I gave birth to Bertha. <laughs> you know, I was starting to regret that I even made the guy. You know, he kept standing next to me, looking over my shoulder, getting in my way. I couldn't get anything done. <laughs> so I realized I couldn't get this bumblebee to fly unless I made him a playmate. So, enter Bertha. And that's when man's troubles began. Only joking, ladies. Only joking. I could have made someone identical, but I don't like repeating myself. So it is something to your saying. When God made them, he broke the mold. And as your automobile salesman say there, we're different features on this new model. And that's how sex was born. <laughs> I didn't have to tell Herman and Bertha how to have sex. That's my boy. That's my girl. <laughs> and no matter what people tell you, you know, I want you to enjoy these beautiful parts and just have fun. You know, unlike those religious people who claim to be celibate and miss out on all the good times. Not that they necessarily do. Uh, God, <laughs> this is a family show. Yes, and so I made sex. So, so that we could procreate. Well, if that's what I wanted, why wouldn't women conceive every time they had sex? I make sure they wouldn't have asked the majority of the time and just have fun. Which brings me to oh. Arthur, who I made a little more uh, uh, creative huh? and intuitive, <laughs> like Bertha. And Rita, who I made a little more adventurous and wild, like Herman. <laughs> well, if I made every snowflake here, why would I do the same for men and women, right? Why do you think that none of you have the same fingerprints? Yeah. I want each and every one of you to be different. Oh, which is why we should all keep trying to get along despite our many, many differences. <laughs> Arthur could make Rita laugh. Yeah. Especially when he tried to teach her how to do the hope of No. But friendship is not what it's all about. And I made Rex. This one hot stud for Arthur. Hashtag grinder, hashtag hookup. Mm. And for Rita, voila, Victoria, one hot smoking babe. Hashtag friend of Ellen, hashtag bootylicious. <laughs> and Rita uh, occasionally made it with Bertha, and, and Herman more than occasionally made it with Arthur. Oh, God. So the sex was a little different, but. But Leviticus. No, Leviticus. If I had a nickel for every time someone on earth mentioned Leviticus, I could pay off their national debt. Listen, people, if you believe Genesis 127, hit me one time. Uh, in the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Yes, male and female, he created them. Why not interpret that to me that I put both male and female qualities into each and every one of you? The people of serendipity believe that, and they wind up having twice the fun. Oh, my God. Uh, still here. Uh, Consuela, uh, what heck happened to lights? Uh, where's our auxiliary power? Yeah, uh, told you. I have a bad feeling about the weather. Uh, uh, Consuela, can you turn on that shortwave radio, please? So sorry, folks. Be right with you, okay? Oh, uh, okay. Uh, that's lovely. Uh, yeah, can we get a, a weather station? Tell us what's going on here. 15. Uh, I'm sorry, who are you? 
God. What? I know you know. Yes, I am. As I was saying, male and female, he created them to mean that male and female were two distinctly separate people. It meant that male and female are two parts of the same person. You see me male, now see me female. And in addition, I make people in all different colors. And I love that your ancestors just ran with that. Yeah, and continue to mix and match, as all of your DNA tests are now proving. Uh, uh, folks, uh, uh, tonight when you're putting your kids to bed, uh, you won't have to worry about them waking up in the middle of the night if they're wearing armor of God pajamas. God, again? Yes, again. I'm so sorry, folks, but I'm right with you, okay? Hang tight, hang tight. So sorry, folks. This is how you're uh, Consuela? Group of animals? 
So why would I ask Noah to build an ark? When I could have just moved him, his family, and all the animals to somewhere where it wasn't flooding. Yeah, honestly, Thomas, what did all the other animals do that was so bad that they deserved to die? Uh, you know what? Let's take a look at their uh, rap sheets, okay. shall we? <laughs> Wanted for armed robbery. <laughs> of church funds. For having sex with underage parishioners. <laughs> yep, they, they all deserve, deserve to drown. drown. Okay, other animals aren't so innocent. Other animals kill each other, don't they? As much as I tried, I never could figure out how to keep them from doing that. Yeah, my fault, not theirs. They're my, my children, children too. too. So Thomas, I would never kill virtually all of the world's animals. Yeah, I bet you would. Hmm. Doubting? Thomas? <laughs> then you must love that Abraham story. You were I supposedly told Abraham to kill his son, Isaac, as a sacrifice to prove how much he loved you. <coughs> Abraham would have been a maniac to agree. You know, what must be going through his head as he laid his son down on the altar? Tied him up tight and, and prepared, prepared to, to kill, kill him. him. And what would Isaac be thinking when he realized that his, his daddy, daddy was about to murder him? Thomas, Thomas I'm I not that mean and insecure. <laughs> And after all these years, don't you think people reading those stories would say... Any god who do something like that is no friend to the human race. This is not a god I can love. Why pray to him? He must hate us. And this is a god, god who is worthy of my adoration. This god is, is out of his door. door. But when Moses wrote those stories... Ah, Moses didn't write those stories. The Genesis chapters were written by Moses. Uh, aren't you just a little suspicious of anyone who writes under an assumed name? <laughs> Actually, Moses was just a nom de plume. <laughs> Pretty language French, no? Maybe. Be also... <laughs> so who wrote those stories if Moses didn't? Now, most of the names wouldn't mean anything to uh, you. Some of them were good people, but for the most part... But they were megalomaniacs who claimed they represented me so they could mess with everyone's head. Yeah, people who loved Buddy into other people's lives just to feel powerful. Oh, you know how Joshua got into the book? <laughs> He was a friend of the editor. <laughs> Joshua gave the editor a nice new cow because the editor's cow had dropped dead. So the editor said, hey, Josh, what can I do for you in return? He never expected Joshua would say, well, you know, I've always toyed with the idea of being a writer. Yeah, the editor needed milk for his newborn, so what was he going to do? I, I just don't believe any of this. Oh, well, like everyone else, you will believe what you want to believe. You're just like the people who believe what you want them to believe. Doc, if they send you money, God will send them money. Ooh, maybe one person who sent you money who wound up with their own compound. Or Lexuses. Lexa. I always wondered about that. Not to mention all the money you made selling those tchotchkes. Oh, oh, I love Yiddish words even more than French, don't you? Oh, such a colorful language. Oh, so you can live high on the hog. Lobster. Shark fin soup. Chateau Mouton Rothschild. Your prosperity. Gospel. Well, every conglomerate needs to trot out a new model every now and then. Yeah, while sticking to the same old principles, mm. thou shalt no, not do no, this. No, thou shalt not do that. Thou shalt not this. look at that. Thou shalt not touch that. You tie people up. And thou shalt not. All these rules written down in holy, holy books. books. Written by holy, holy men. men. Who are actually holy, holy terrors. terrors. <laughs> Thomas, did you really think that while I was traveling here that uh, I wouldn't figure out what you've been doing? Oh, uh, yeah, frankly. I was rather surprised you took the chance of having me on your show. What could I do? Say no? What if I passed up a session with God? What passed up the millions upon millions you sold the show no. for? Uh, biggest deal in TV history. No, I just hoped you were showing up to, to give everybody hell. hell. Yes. I thought you'd say, I'm so disgusted with all of you. I gave you this wonderful world, and, and, and look how you fucked it up. How can you pollute it and, and destroy it and, and, and become murderers and, 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 and terrorists and, and warmongers and, and make animals extinct every day in every way? You humans, you're, you're evil and, and you're hopeless. That's what I was expecting. Well, that would have been good for business. Spread the guilt. Collect, Collect the, the guilt. guilt. Oh, oh, there's the title of your next book. So... What would have happened if I had spouted fire and brimstone? Screaming, you're all atrocious, you're all disgraceful. And that would have worked as well when parents yell at their kids. Why can't you be more like Johnny next door? He gets all A's. Johnny's a fashion plate. Johnny's so polite to his 
elders. When has that made any kid ever say, oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, Mom and Dad. I really appreciate you showing me the error of my ways. Bless you for pointing out my shortcomings. From now on, I'm going to be just, just like, like Johnny. Johnny. Yeah, well, that kid ends up hating Johnny and his parents. Yes, so if I came here and started criticizing and blaming everyone, the world would wind up hating me. Now, my coming here was all part of God's plan to unmask the real identity of Dr. Dr. Thomas Isaac Rahan. Christian first name, Jewish middle name, Muslim last name. Something for everyone. Clever, real clever. That doesn't make me a bad guy. No, but being the devil does. What are you talking about? Speak of the devil. The actual reason I came on your show. Is to reveal who you really are. Everybody in the world knows who I really am. I'm Dr. Thomas Isaac Rahan. No, you're the devil in disguise. You're the son of Satan. You're Lucifer's love child. You're Rosemary's baby. baby. Ah! <laughs> After Lucifer the first and I parted ways, there have been 126,000 generations of devils. Thousands of Lucifers, hundreds of Beelzebub's, dozens of Mephistopheles, and one L. Ron Hubbard. <laughs> you, Thomas Isaac Satan, are the current head of the family business. Heir to the devil who started running lives. I'm ruining lives through, through religion. religion. It was your family's revenge on me for taking away Lucifer's stripes. Now. <laughs> Why don't they just assume I'll welcome them with open arms? Yeah, and then there are the parents of the 
children who marry outside their faith, and the parents say, my son is dead, hmm. or my daughter is dead. Or Muslim women who marry Christians and get stoned to death. Oh, serendipity has it right. Uh -huh. There are enough laws. We don't need religion to create even more of them. <coughs> oh, yeah. Oh, really? I did good with the money that people sent me. I have fed the hungry. I've clothed and sheltered the homeless. I helped the sick with, with 1% of it. it. You could have at least paid your employees in Guadalajara more than $4 a day to make your slingshots and ketchup. Though cheating them didn't allow you to buy your compound. Yeah, and uh, this stadium. The Rams left town years ago. This whole place was empty. I was good for St. Louis, and I didn't put a gun to anybody's head to give me money. Who needs a gun when you put guilt and fear inside? My ancestors who wrote those books did the world a favor. Didn't we include the idea that every religion believes do unto well, others as you would have them do, do unto you? you. Well, there's nothing wrong with that, is there? And you even admitted you liked some of the commandments. Oh. acknowledge that there are plenty of religious people in the world who are genuine and wonderful. Mm, like the Sikhs in India who feed the hungry every day and clean the houses of those who are not able to, as well as many other charitable acts. Or the pastor in Lenore, North Carolina, who created a daycare service for refugees and migrant women who wouldn't have been able to go to work without it. Mm. And the mother in Charleston, South Carolina, who found it in her heart to forgive the mass murderer who killed her son. Millions of others, too. But you, Thomas, you're like that politician who promises a hundred things and does maybe one or two. So the people who voted for him can defend him by saying, but didn't he do such and such just like he promised? Right. right. Fine. What the hell do you expect from the devil? Mm -hmm. Is it my fault people were stupid enough to do what we told them, even if it made life miserable? Yes, how my family rejoiced when people obeyed the rules they thought came from you. Thomas, the most successful country in the history of the world was founded on the principle that the government that governs best is one that governs least. And out of the more than 223 billion people who have already lived and died on this planet, do you know how many of them have truly, truly enjoyed themselves? 606. <laughs> I gave everyone a moral compass. Oh, please, I installed a moral compass into everyone's way before you came along. Then tell me, Thomas, why haven't you asked even once about Consuela? Or any of your other unpaid volunteers. <laughs> when I couldn't find anyone, I assumed they all died in the garage collapse. But I'm not worried. There are millions of people who will be thrilled to follow Thomas, Isaac, Rayon. Soon, I'll have a whole new army of devoted volunteers. Roberta Rindler wasn't killed when the garage collapsed. Who's she? The nice young lady you renamed Consuela Desiderio in order to convince people that you had hired a minority or two. Oh, yeah. That wasn't it. Roberta didn't die when the garage collapsed. Oh? No. The cancer killed her. A cancer that would have been easily treatable if it had been caught in time. Well, but Roberta didn't have it treated because you won't give your employees health benefits. Because <laughs> prayer, prayer and faith, faith are, are all you need. need. Well, aren't you two the little Anne Franks? <laughs> <laughs> so you're telling me the world is full of naturally good people, right? Like Hitler and Stalin. Your uncle Dale's about the night. And all your other religious forebearers who gave us such holy endeavors as... The Salem Witch Trials. How many died? Twenty. Irish Protestants versus Catholics. Four thousand. Spanish Inquisition. Five thousand. Sri Lankan Religious Civil War. One hundred thousand. Lebanese Religious Civil War. One hundred twenty-seven thousand. Islamic Terrorism. This century alone, one hundred fifty-two thousand. The First Sudanese Religious Civil War. One point one million. The Second Sudanese Religious Civil War. Two million. French Wars of Religion. Three million. The Crusades. Six million. The Thirty Years War. Six and a quarter million, and I don't have to tell you what got us six and a half million, do I? But I will tell you about all those holiest of holy men who helped win these wars with such implements as 
the Spanish collar. The rack. The thumb screw. The leg crusher. The wheel onto which a body was tied and has its spun and attended with an iron rod broke as many bones as possible. The iron boots into which a non-believer's feet were shackled so they couldn't be pulled out as molten lead was poured in. The iron maiden, a mummy case with spikes inside that pierced the flesh as the door slammed shut. The cradle of unrest for children who refused to testify their parents were non-believers. It was a cradle that rocked so the child would be speared by the spikes inside. But then was then, and now is now. Conversion therapy for gays. Evangelical Christians attach electrodes to a child's genitals to turn them straight. Muslim torture. Female circumcision. And just wait to see what Rosemary's grandbaby and I come up with next. And no matter what you do, we'll get away with it. Because people think they have to obey God's rules if they're going to get into heaven. So I don't care how long you're here on sabbatical from that oh-so-wonderful serendipity. People will always believe us instead because we know how to spread complete, utter, 100% fear. Thomas, did it ever occur to you that... When the electricity came back on, so did the cameras and microphones. Live from St. Louis, it's, it's Sunday, Sunday night. night. <laughs> We've been live streaming on Twitter, Facebook, and, and YouTube. YouTube. Oh! <laughs> oh. Oh. No. Churches will have taken them over. See you soon, Jerry. That's one o'clock. Yeah. And who was that guy who said LGBT stands for Let God Burn Them? Ha, Pat Robertson. Oh. Who also said feminism encourages women to leave their husbands, kill their children, practice witchcraft, destroy capitalism. And become lesbians? Yeah, have it too. You know what? Yeah. I only regret I didn't get back before Oral Roberts died. Oh, that one. Who asked his listeners, please send me eight million dollars or God will call me home. Which got him nine million. I should have come back sooner. <laughs> oh, and Thomas, go to hell. <laughs> test of your faith to see if you'd stay. And I'm so glad you did. You see, folks, I wanted to give you a big reminder on how to prepare for the day when God does show up. When you want to show him how you've luxuriated in all of those riches he's given you. After you call 877 <laughs> -E -E -E. 